So I got the cylinder head off the other day. I didn't get any footage of that because, well, it was kind of a tedious and a little bit of a scary process. Uh, the way I had to do it with my little John Deere tractor over there was using the, the forks on that and yeah, just uh, kinda, you know, it's a little iffy. But we did a little by little, a couple things you really need to make sure you do before you take the head off is you gotta get your fuel return line off of the back of the head. This is your doser line right here. Make sure that little hold down clamp was on the back of the head. I still got some things I gotta tape off here. But we ran out of time because it started raining, so I got everything covered as quick as I could. That's been the hold up for the last couple days is, um, you know, the weather. So, so yeah, when we got the head off there, what I did is I used some of my chains. I have half inch chains mostly on the truck and I just basically bolted them to the side of the head. And front and back and then on the forks I used my plasma cutter and I cut a couple holes in the end of the forks there and what I did with those is I put my uh, some uh, you know, toe balls on the end just so you, you got to tilt it when you're pulling it out of there to get it up over the uh, timing cover and I didn't want it to come out and also I used some uh, tie downs to help, um, you know, hold it in place. I didn't want it to slide off the end of the forks. All right, so let's start back here at number six cylinder. I'm hoping you guys can see that all right. I'm really have to climb on top of this engine. Let me get the flashlight out. So number six looks good. We still got good cross, cross hatch marks on the, um, on the cylinder there. That's number six. This one here is number three. I don't know if you can see that that well. Good cross hatch marks on there. This is number, I'm sorry, that was, yeah, it was number four, not three. This is number three. And you can see there, once again, good cross hatch. Number one. So let me turn this over real quick. And we'll expose the devil in the mix here has been number five, because that's where, when I did my pressure checking, and the water was coming out between the piston and the sleeve. So that cylinder looks good too. It hasn't been washed out. I mean, I didn't let it go very long. There was never any water in the oil. So I think we should be good with that one. And then number one, kind of the same thing. Uh, let me get the flashlight out. We got good cross hatch in there. So, yeah. So that's how the cylinders are looking. All right, so next thing we want to do is uh, measure if we've got a drop liner and what the liner protrusion is. So I might call this a, a tram type of dial indicator where you can slide it across the surface. This is actually a layout tool for a lathe so you can measure where you want to make your next cuts at. But I think this is going to work good in this application. and. Mind you, this surface isn't clean yet, so it might be a little off, but we're just going to go ahead and zero it and then get some measurements here. 66 thousandths. Go back to this cylinder over here. This is number five. This is where we were having the problem. So we got 66 thousandths. I want you to check it from four locations. Oh, I'm on the. 64, 65, 64 thousandths. Uh, you guys aren't going to be able to see that with a camera, but that's 64 thousandths. Yeah. And this one here. Sixty 
67 thousandths, 63 thousandths, zero it again, just to be on the safe side, that was minus two. thousands so they're pretty consistent so this is the head gasket it got a little damaged in the removal but uh, I tried to save what I could but as you can see I don't see anywhere in here where we've had water blowing out you know I don't know if you can see that this is a number five cylinder We've had no water blown out anywhere. Any damage you might see to it has been from taking it off, but I was really careful to not destroy anything. But I don't see where anything's blown in here. So, I mean, the head gasket was actually intact. All of them look pretty good. Even, even when you're bent up, you can kind of tell. You don't see any. Normally, you know, I was an auto mechanic. And normally, you could tell when there's, like, seepage between here. It'll be blown out. You got compression. You got all that stuff. So, I'm throwing out the idea of the head gasket. So, there's only one thing left that it could be. And I think it's the cylinder head. But we're going to get that up on its side and check that out. But... I'm 99.9% .9 sure that's where it's at. So next thing, let's talk about these rockers. The rocker assembly, you can see right here. See how we've got that little erosion going on there where they're getting a little chewed up. That one's on a Jake roller. You get your other rollers here. There's, I mean, some of them are passable, but Gotta love my bent up room. But, you know, some of them aren't. So, again, with the, with the Jake Rocker, I mean, that alone, I wouldn't worry about too much. I don't know, I guess you guys will tell me what you think when you watch it. I wouldn't worry about it too much, but let's go look at the cam before we make a decision here on whether we should be, be replacing the whole rocker sh shafts with rockers or if we should be not worrying about it. Let's take a look at this cam now. You can see how the cam is starting to bronze up. It's got some pretty significant wear on it as you can tell on the cam lobes, on the, on the Jake lobes. I can feel a little wavering in there I mean honestly I think I mean if it were me and well I guess it is me <laughs> look you can see the the bearing surfaces for the cam they're getting a little wore out and like I said if it were me and it is me look at that one I'm gonna go ahead and replace the cam I don't think I really want to do that without replacing the rockers, so... And it, it just gets like that all the way on down the line. More and more of the same. So, we'll just get a new cam in there. And the rockers. I don't know. Tell me in the comments, what do you guys think? And we'll go from there. It's Christmas Day, by the way, so Merry Christmas, everybody. And... And happy year, new year. Happy near beer. <laughs>
I had no oil, or no water in the oil. Um, you know, the truck was actually running quite well. However, I did end up with some water in the, towards the very end, in the um, crankcase breather. So, when as soon as that happened, I shut it down and I towed it home. So, uh, but before that, it was running fine. No, n nothing, you know, seemed out of line other than where the pressure kept changing up and down in my tank. So if you got any ideas, suggestions, or comments, go ahead and, you know, leave it in the comment section, or if you're watching this from Facebook, leave it in the area that I posted it in Facebook. And um, Larry Schroeder, if you're listening, hey, I wanted to say, give you a big shout out and say thank you for, you know, a lot of your guidance that you've been giving me. That's That's been a big help. So thanks a lot, guys. Merry Christmas, and um, we'll catch you on the next video. See you all soon.